mantras are sacred phrases used in different uh, religious traditions. Um, they're not words that necessarily have a direct meaning, but they're sounds that we produce. Uh, they're vibratory patterns. Um, and if people have used the same mantra over many years, um, then when you chant the mantra now, you'll come into resonance with all those who've chanted it before. I got interested in this partly through the work of my own wife, Jill Purse, who teaches workshops on chanting and meditation and uh, working with mantras. And the interesting thing about a mantra is that when you chant it, there's a resonance at three different levels. First of all, there's the literal sonic resonance in your own body of the chanting. Secondly, there's the resonance with other people. If you're chanting in a group, and you're chanting together or singing together, you're breathing at the same time. Uh, your, your whole physiology is coming into resonance. And thirdly, there's the morphic resonance with all those who've done it before. So what I wanted to do now is a small experiment in mantras, um, uh, in, in, in mantra research. So I'm going to ask you to be participants in this experiment. And um, I'm going to work with the most basic mantra in the Western traditions, which is Amen, or in its original pronunciation, Amin. This is used in the Jewish tradition, Islamic and Christian traditions, in the Bible, in the New Testament, when Jesus says, verily, verily, I say unto you, the word in Greek is, uh, as written in Greek is Amin. And the way it's written is with the eater, the long E. So it's always been pronounced Amin. In the Greek, in the Orthodox churches, it's pronounced Amin. In Islam, it's pronounced Amin. But when the Bible was translated into Latin, there isn't a long E in Latin, so it was spelt A-M-E-N, and people started pronouncing it Amen. Now, this has a, quite a different effect on the physiology. So, what I'm going to now ask you to take part in this small sonic resonance experiment, and we're going to chant, uh, the, first we'll start with the syllable R. So we'll chant the word, the syllable R, on one note, but we'll do it with blocking our ears, because if you block your ears, don't do it yet, otherwise you won't hear what to do at next. Uh, but um, when you block your ears, you can actually experience the internal resonation. This is not some metaphor, it's utterly real. The sound you're making is a vibration. It's vibrating your bones, your skeleton, and your body. Um, it's literally resonating. You don't notice it unless you block your ears. But if you do block your ears, then you can actually feel it in the body. And so the, we'll do it with R in a moment. And the, when you've got your ears blocked, and we'll chant R on a single note, R, ah, that note, um, and just observe. We'll do it on, just on a single breath and observe where you're feeling it in your body. So let's do that now if you block your ears. Ah. I can't ask you individually, but let's have, there, there are several possible positions there, in the chest, in the throat, or in the head. Now, how many people felt it down in the belly? A few. How many felt it in the chest? Most people. In the throat? Quite a lot. In the head? A few in the head. Okay. Well, so I think most people it was in the chest or the throat. Now, let's do that with E, the sound E, as in our mean. So we'll do the same thing. Block your ears and we'll chant E. E. Now, lower body, chest, a few, throat, some head. Yeah, great majority in the head. So 
What we, just this very simple experiment taking less than two minutes, uh, we can see that the R sound um, vibrates mainly in the chest or upper chest, and the E sound mainly in the head. Now, if we take our men, E eh, is the syllable, A eh, syllable, let's see where that is, A. Eh. Uh, lower abdomen, few chest, throat, head. Yes, well, most people got it in this region, a bit like the R sound. So now, what I'd like you to do is do the complete mantra, Amen, with your ears blocked. And then we'll do it, uh, well, let's do that first, and notice where it is, and, and we'll do Amen later. So, Amen now, on one note. One thing I d we didn't do in our previous practice was the N or M sound. But let's try that now with just the mmm, the, uh, like the humming sound. Mm. Well, for me, that was mostly in the head and centered on the nose. How many people had that kind of experience? Yes, so the, the Amen is, is mostly in this region, but the end, the N at the end, brings you up into the head. Um, now we'll do Amin, um, and notice where that is, and um, with the ears blocked. Oh. So, how many of you noticed the difference between the Amen and the Amin? Yes, I think most of you did, yes. Well, there you are. I say this is a very simple um, thing to try, but what it's showing you is that the, the, the vibration is literal, um, and it affects different parts of the body. And we could now try the great... Um, basic Hindu mantra, Aum, Aum, it's usually pronounced Aum, so it goes through Aum. Um, so let's do that with our ears closed. For me, that's rather like our mean, and there's a sort of movement of the vibration up towards the head. Is that was that more or less what everyone experienced? What did you did you have that kind of experience? Yes, this is um, uh, a basic principle of chanting. Um, the point about chanting compared with singing is that you're using fewer syllables, less notes. It's simpler, easier, and it's more possible to do it in a kind of meditative way, which is why chanting is used in all religious traditions. Um, and singing, of course, is used in all cultures. I mean, our own culture is probably one of the least singing cultures in the world. A lot of people in the modern world never sing, whereas people in tribal societies sing uh, you know, regularly. And nowadays, most people don't get to sing unless they go to church or sing in a choir. Uh, most people don't sing. Maybe they sing in the shower or in the car. But uh, we've, a lot of people don't sing anymore in our culture. And singing and chanting are really important. As my wife likes to say, as Jill says, if we're going to re-enchant the world, we have to chant. Because enchantment depends on chanting. And it really works. If you want to be in a space and change the atmosphere of that space quickly. Chant. Um, I chant Amin. Uh, 
you may have a preferred mantra, but if you, if you just try this, you'll find it, it's a very quick way of changing the atmosphere of a space you're in and your own mood, bringing you much more into the presence and much more into that place. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.